Hello, everyone. Guess who's back? It's this podcast. It's the podcast that never dies, even though you think it did. Look, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. A few weeks ago, the DC fandom happened, and personally, I think it kicked Comic-Con's butt back to Comic-Con. Did that work? Eh, I don't know. But here's the thing. Now, there was a trailer for a new movie called The Batman. And the. The. Big The. Uh, the problem is, is that whenever a new Batman movie comes out, there's always this huge, like, debacle of nerds that just get really, like, pissy about everything, and they get mad because it's not, like, the true incarnation of how they perceive the Batman. You can even go back and look that even with the Michael Keaton Batman movie, there was people that were furious that Michael Keaton, a comedian, was cast as Batman. So, uh, what are we going to do today? Well, surprise, we're actually huge Batman fans, and we're going to talk about how, uh, how we're a little nervous about this movie, and we have a list of demands they better meet, or else the movie won't be as good as, as, as it could be. So, j- just before we get going, let me just say that uh, me and Connor are, I already said we're pretty big Batman fans, but, you know, we like the movies, we like the comics, we like the games, so, like, we're pretty well versed in our Batman universe lore, so with that, I think we can move on to the first point, point. and for that is, Batman needs to follow his three rules. Here's the thing, if you know Batman, you know that he has three rules, no killing, no guns, and no drinking. But if you watch Batman vs. Superman, you'll notice that he's drinking alcohol, killing people, and using guns. Now this may sound like a minor like nitpick, but it actually plays a huge role in Batman's character. Batman's three rules help separate him from you know the psychopaths that he's fighting. And I just think it would be really cool to see you know a Batman that's not a total psychopath. Is it my turn to talk yeah, now? Yeah, I, I guess it's your turn. Oh, okay. It's Oops. been a long time since we've done this. Yeah. I don't know. I was kind of blinking out, too. But yeah, so everybody knows the whole, oh, no kill rule that Batman has, but... Even though he like, kills people, like, all the time, clearly, in, like, those movies. And, heck, even in the Arkham <laughs> games, like, some, some yeah. of the takedowns you do on those people, they're not getting back up. Yeah. But, like, the gun one and the not drinking one are kind of, like, implied i guess so i mean it would be nice to like um actually hear them like or outlined or something Mm -hmm. in the comics or not in the comics in this new movie because i actually didn't know the other two were actually i I didn't even know he had three rules (laughs) in total i just kind of assumed like no drinking because he has to be alert all the time and then no guns because you know no kill Mm mm-hmm I mean, I guess he kind of says that in um, Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. And I know I know someone's going to leave a comment that Batman does use a gun in Dark Knight Returns, but uh, if, you, if you've read or understand that comic, there's, there's, there's a reason behind that. And he's not trying to kill the person <laughs> with the gun. And yeah. again, you're right. Even in the comic, he says, this is the tool of the enemy. We don't use this gun, you know? Yeah. So yeah, just hearing them explicitly listed or whatnot or revisited yeah, that'd be kind of nice mm-hmm. all right moving into our next point so pretty much everybody can agree that the dark knight the film is pretty pretty awesome right robbie oh yeah it's probably yeah. the best batman movie it's either that or lego batman <laughs> so, yeah now while it is an excellent film when you boil it all down it's just a mobster film, pretty much. Like a crime drama that Batman and the Joker show up in occasionally. There's a lot of legalese, a lot of police procedural stuff. Just doesn't seem like much like a Batman movie. But, I don't know, it kind of works out well for that film. But for this movie being called The Batman, it should be a movie about the Batman, you know? Yeah. So... Well, it did work for that for uh, the Dark Knight. Just tone it down. Just tone down the crime drama element. And I think the likelihood of this happening is is very slim, just based off the trailers and stuff. It looks like there's a lot of big crime boss families and stuff. And looking at the IMDb page, it, like the cast, how Falcone and stuff are going to be in it. And I get that I get that Batman fights criminals, but 
again, it, it would be nice if the movie called The Batman was focused more around, you know, who Batman is and stuff like that. Yeah. Not and, just a crime drama with Batman slapped onto it. Yeah, and I, I really wouldn't have a problem with them trying that again, but usually when certain successful films have particular elements to them and other movies or follow-up things like reboots or whatnot try to capture those same elements, they usually don't end up doing as well. I, crap, what's a good example of that? Like, Oh, The Matrix. Oh, The Matrix? Yeah, yeah, The Matrix. <laughs> I mean, uh, The Matrix introduced some pretty cool, like, uh, is his name Johnny Woo, that... Shanghai John Woo. Yeah, John Woo. You know, it introduced yeah. a lot of really cool slow-mo and uh, flips and karate and stuff. And it, it works in the first Matrix movie. But then every single action movie after that just decided that they had to had to copy that. And it just... The, the, what makes The Matrix good is the battle scenes. But it also has, you know, some decent writing and stuff with it. And a lot of these movies just oversaturated the slow-mo and kung fu flips and stuff for the point where it just... It just gets, like, embarrassing to watch some movies like that. Uh, the second Mission Impossible movie, for example. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my example is going to be um, the Silent Hill video game series. Because a lot of the more recent games, in my opinion, are too much like Silent Hill 2. Which is, you know, the big son of a bitch of the series. Like, the one that everybody, like, holds in, like, really high regard. And I think the reason why a lot of those games kind of failed, at least on a like on a story level, among other things, is that they tried to copy it too much. Yeah. <laughs> they just saw what was successful there, tried to get lightning to strike twice, and well, it didn't. Yo, know, speaking of speaking of Batman and trying to get lightning to strike twice, uh, you you want to talk about the Joker now? <laughs> yeah, I guess so get back on topic (laughs) yeah okay so the joker is is batman's arch nemesis and because this new the batman movie is supposed to kick off like a trilogy i do want to see the joker show up in some version but the joker has just just been oversaturated at this point i mean we had the heath ledger one and then we had on the heath ledger one's really good and then we had we had the uh, jared leto one which isn't very good and then we had the the super edgy Joker movie and stuff, and then we got this, which will probably introduce another Joker, you know. And I I like the Joker, but you know, there's other Batman villains out there, you know. And I think that sometimes they put too much of a focus on the Joker, and we miss out on seeing you know some more cool, lesser known villains and stuff. Uh, yeah. Arkham Arkham Knight suffers from this. There was no reason Joker had to be in that game. Uh, Arkham Origins is an, also a good example. <laughs> that yeah, Arkham Origins is the better example. I was I was so excited to be like, oh sweet, an <laughs> Arkham game that's not about the Joker, and then surprise, it was the Joker the whole time. Yeah, I mean, we should have saw that coming because I think they made it abundantly clear that both. Or no, never mind. I don't think Black Mask was vo- voiced by a uh, Troy Baker, or was he? Uh, he might have been. He might have been. Okay, because if. If they shared a voice actor, it'd be like, oh, yeah, it's all that coming. God I forbid mean, we, knew... we develop and create a new original villain. Yeah. And Black Mask wasn't an original villain. No, but, no. Like, but... He was different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got the old switcheroonie. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, sort of kind of half happened with Arkham Knight as well, but... I haven't I haven't beaten Arkham Knight. Isn't it like the Joker's like ghost, or is it just that Batman's been like hit with like the fear stuff? I just know Joker's yeah, in a it bit a of, lot. <laughs> bit a bit of both. <laughs> yeah, mild spoiler. No, it's more that like Scarecrow was set up to be the main villain, and he's barely in the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what happened there. Like he's barely in the game at all. Yeah. I think this Batman has a lot of really cool lesser-known villains. Uh, one of them I've always wanted to see in a movie is Man Bat. It was just like this big mutated bat monster. I'm like, yeah, his name's kind of cheesy because it's just Batman backwards. But I don't know. I think it'd be cool to see a Batman movie where he's tracking down this big bat monster. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think uh, speaking on that, like a lot of, well, another thing that I think kind of limited the Christopher Nolan Batman films was that they were the grounded in realism. Yeah, grounded in realism. That's what I was going for, and. So that like cuts out like villains like I don't know well like Man Bad I guess Mister Poison sort Ivy of Poison and, Ivy yeah yeah I mean they can be reimagined but like Again. I'd rather have them yeah. be like their counter comic book counterpart or close closer to that oh for sure limiting so do you think we've talked about oversaturation enough yes oh too bad because <laughs> we have another bullet point to talk about and that is the death of Batman's parents. <laughs> now, I don't even know if I have to say anything about this, okay? But here's the thing. Everybody knows that Batman's parents are dead. Like, maybe they didn't 10, 15, 20 years ago, but everybody knows Batman's origin story now. It's been done to death in these movies. It was done in The Dark Knight. It was done in the 89 movie. It was done in the animated series. It was done in the Arkham games. It was done in the Joker movie. The, the Joker movie, which wasn't even supposed to be about Batman. They had to just... Sneak that in at the end. Surprise, this is actually a Batman origin story because you need to see Batman's parents die. It was also kind of brought up in the Lego movie, too. Oh, yeah, <laughs> geez. <laughs> or in, in the friggin' song that he made or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing. Like, don't, don't waste the audience's time, you know? I mean, we can only spend, like, sure. two hours in the theater with a new Batman movie every, like, three years. So, like... Don't waste our time with seeing a, you know, Batman's parents die. And the other thing is, was it Batman versus Superman did it, and it did it really well. I don't think you're going to be able to top the one in BVS, which is, like, weird saying something nice about that movie. <laughs> but, uh... Wait, 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 hold on. You're going to need to kind of explain that a bit. Okay, okay. so at the beginning of Batman versus Superman, uh, it shows Batman's parents die, and, I don't know, it's, okay. it's very accurate to... Uh, the Dark Knight Returns. It's like panel for panel, and uh, oh, okay. There's a video I saw that like explained like some of like the symbolism in it, and it's 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 a cool little scene, you know. Okay, because so, the mean, only thing I'm not saying it should have been in the movie because again we already knew, but if you put all of them in a room and like had them fight, that one would probably win. Okay, it's like the only thing I get hung up on with Batman v Superman is the whole. Oh, our moms have the first same name or the same first name. Oh yeah, that's that's horrible. I, I don't I don't like that part at all. But all right, the actual visual scene of it happening is pretty is, is well made. All right, so I think we are down to our final final point, and that is uh, not to inaccurately reimagine characters. Which I mean, we sort of talked about this a handful of times throughout this whole video, but it, it'd be nice to see. It would just be nice to see just a very accurate adaptation of the broad scheme of Batman comics, you know, where the villains act like the villains in the comics, you know? Yeah. It's like the reason why I kind of had this on our list of points is because of how they're deciding to portray the Riddler in this film. It's like if you watch the trailer, I mean, as best as you can watch the trailer with how damn dark it actually is. (laughs) You uh, see the guy in the beginning and, like, you think he might be, like, hush or something, especially. Especially, like, the tape over the face and stuff. Like, Yeah. I was like, ooh, a Batman villain that's never been in a movie before. Ooh, spooky. But it turns out that it's the Riddler, and he's apparently, like, a a serial killer now. As opposed to whatever the hell he did in the comics. <laughs> yeah, it was. I mean, he had a lot of incarnations, and I think he did kill people in the comics yeah. quite a bit. But uh, yeah, one of the, but... one of the cool things about Riddler in the comics is that his whole deal is that he's just trying to outsmart Batman because in the yeah. comics, Batman is ridiculously smart. Yeah, it's so uh, it was more of a uh, what's the word for it? he was it was more of a battle of intelligence with him rather than brawn. Yeah, but the thing for me is like. Apparently, like, whatever Riddler's doing in this film has something to do with um, Batman's past or, like, the Wayne family. So, just knowing that and how he's, like, portrayed, it would have been, it would have made more sense if they would have used, like, Hush. Yeah. (laughs) As opposed to the Riddler, because, like, I don't know. Like, most of us think of Riddler, we think of the, you know, guy with, like, like, dressed in all green, but bowler hat. 
question marks everywhere. Mm-hmm. Not some edgy guy with a duct tape mask. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing: like this movie is is supposed to be like a mystery movie. It's going to be Batman trying to solve a mystery, and like I'm really really excited for that. But at the same time, think about how cool it would have been if they chose a villain that no one had heard of before. You know, I mean, everyone's going to go into the theater yeah. and go, "Oh yeah, it's going to be the Riddler." I know this because I saw the action figure at Walmart and stuff. You know. And, you know, the big question marks at the end of the uh, trailer, which are a lot more accurate since uh, Robert Pattinson got COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the, the question marks were where the twos were, mm-hmm. <laughs> as opposed to the, the O and I'm, the I'm not going to I'm not going <laughs> to say it's not going to come out in 3030. It it honestly could. Could be 2030. Yeah, 2030. <laughs> yeah. So I think that pretty so, much sums up all of our thoughts. Yeah. I guess, okay, I have I have one more bonus thought, and this isn't so much like for this movie, but if they are going to make a trilogy, uh, put Robin in it. Come on, guys. <laughs> Remember when everybody thought Aquaman was stupid, and they got Jason Momoa to play him, and now everybody likes him? Yeah, you can do that with Robin as well. You know, like, there's plenty of cool Robin stories out there and stuff. Robin isn't just the, uh, what is his name, the one from the 60s. Yeah. yeah, I mean, everybody, a lot of people like Teen Titans. Yeah, lots, tons of people like Teen Titans, you know? Like, Robin <laughs> has a strong enough fan base that you can put him in a movie and people won't be, oh, I'm not going to watch that Batman movie because Batman's supposed to be edgy and Robin's just too goofy for that. Hmm. Should have made it, should make a Damian Wayne the Robin, even though, no, that wouldn't work for this one. Yeah. Because Batman's, like, only two years into his, mm-hmm. uh, into, uh, being Batman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that rules out Nightwing as well, which is too bad. Yeah. Man, if only they kept if only they kept making those uh DCEU movies. It's weird that I'm saying that cuz they were all pretty bad, but like Yeah. I had faith that they were going to get better. I was excited to see see what they were going to do with all that stuff. And I guess Did, uh... we're going to kind of get to see that with the Snyder cut, but <laughs> maybe. Yeah, maybe. Did uh did Wonder Woman 1984 ever come out? I I don't know. I know it was supposed to come out this month, but I haven't heard or seen anything about it. <laughs> yeah. I just saw Tenet this weekend. Uh, that was fine. Huh. Okay, here's I'm just going to say it right now. Okay, so the movie Tenet uh I've never seen a movie that so much of it is dedicated to explaining like what's going on in the movie, and then you just have no clue what is going on at all. Like you are just lost. And at first, I was like, "Oh, well, that's just because it's a really smart Christopher Nolan movie." But then I came home and thought about it, and I was like, mm, "I don't think so. I think this might just be a dumb movie. <laughs> it's a fun, <laughs> dumb action movie." And if you're gonna argue with me, uh, please leave a comment in the, in the, please please leave a comment below about why there was a random time machine just chilling in the airport. That made no sense. It was just sitting there. Why why was it there? All right. I think that I think I think that concludes the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh... Crap, I don't want to say we have anything in the pipeline because I have no idea when we're going to actually get this out. Yeah, holy cow. And in relation to what. Mm-hmm. But we got, we still got um, the Uzumaki manga to review. Probably some other bonus stuff. Yeah. Throw I always say there. this. I'd like to do some fun Halloween type video, but who knows if that'll happen. You got a plan now. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right. Well, I am your boy Robbie, and we are signing out. Bye. Bye.